Welcome back to the interview with Russell Earl McGowan. This is part eight, and you left off, you were talking about the business. Yes, uh, I mentioned the business was doing real well. Why was it doing real well? The reason it was doing real well was because of the employees I had. I had, uh, as I think I mentioned prior, four men now working. I had Merv, he was the outside technician. I had Barney, and he was wonderful. He was a German, and Barney was one of the best technicians I ever met. And uh, then I had Merv, uh, well, I mentioned Merv, and uh, two other men. And uh, they are the ones that uh, made the bench. One man made $1,250 on the bench in one week. I do remember that real well. And I asked him if he would like uh, more pay. And he said, oh, I'm happy. I got, I'm happy he was getting 150 a week. As I say, uh, RCA was only paying 85. So uh, he was happy. So what I did on uh, Friday nights, I'd take the men out. Everybody, we'd all go out to eat, and I'd have steaks and beer if they wanted, and I'd pay for it. And I tried to treat them real well as employees because I appreciated them very much. Uh, then uh, I decided, well, being uh, I have to have a decide here whether I'm going to sell the business or or and make Lorraine happy or well, what do I want to become a rich man or do I want to have spend time with my family. And I thought, of the two, I'd much rather spend time with my family, so I decided to sell it. Well, Merv, he had met a lady in town, which we knew, because we'd, Sharon, uh, we'd all went out dancing together, and together, Merv and Dorothy and, and uh, Lorraine and I, and uh, Dorothy had a home, so she offered to put the home up as part payment on the business. So we went to the lawyer to make the transfer of the title to the business, with Merv and Dorothy, and we're all sitting there. And I said to Mr. Yohi, who is the lawyer, I said, uh, if Merv doesn't, or oh, by the way, Merv, do you intend to run the business as I run it and, and take care of Marguerite and her children? If you don't, I don't want to sell it to you. And Mr. Yohi heard me say that, and uh, I meant it. And he said, oh, no, no, I'll, I'll take good care of it. Because uh, when Merv worked in Sacramento as an outside service man, he uh, loaded the sets up with tubes they didn't need, and, and he started doing that in my business, and I told him I didn't want that, and he stopped doing it. But I was afraid he'd go back to doing that again. And he said, oh, no, no, I'm going to take good care of it. So I sold it to him, and I'm very fortunate I got all my money, believe it or not. Uh, the house paid for the biggest part of it, and the rest of it I uh, got through... Uh, stock which I took out tubes and things and anyway uh, it ended up then that I needed a job but or, or I'll go to school so I thought well I'll go to college so I went down to Valley State and I passed the entrance exam to get in and I bought used books because used books were much more reasonable I didn't have a lot of money but I did have some income from rentals and one thing or another so I thought well I'll, I'll try to get me a degree and get me a real good job so I took 14 units, which is a, quite a heavy load. I spent an awful lot of time in the library researching material for the classes and so on. And, but it, after about one uh, quarter, I realized I couldn't make it still feed uh, the family of three so, uh, and my wife. So I uh, figured, well, I'll try for a city job. So I went to Van Nuys City Hall and I looked on a bulletin board and it was a job opening and for a correctional officer in the police department. That's a man who, or a person who works in the jail. So I uh, took the uh, uh, exam, the uh, physical, I took the physical exam and passed that. Then they had a, a written exam and I uh, took the written exam and I passed the written exam. When I went to North Hollywood High School though, there were to the block two people no, excuse me, two blocks long of people in line. So I thought, what am I doing here? I wouldn't have a chance. But I went in and they filled room after room after room. 30 people in this room, 30 were in this, 30 in this. And I sat there and I did the test and uh, I went over and reviewed each question over and over. And uh, then I noticed that everybody in the room had gone in about two hours. It was a two hour test. And uh, toward the end, it wasn't anybody left but about two people and myself. But uh, so anyway, 
it ended up that I went home and about two weeks later I got a card in the mail that I had passed the written exam and uh, to win for an oral interview. So I, went, I put on a suit, shirt, tie, went down to City Hall and I went in and four men, two of them businessmen, two of them city supervisors, they interviewed me and asked me various questions and I came out very high on the oral. In fact, I think I got 92 on the oral. I only got 79 on the written, but uh, the combination of the two uh, brought me up enough that I was on the list. So then they called me uh, and uh, I went to work and they sent me to the main jail in, in uh, Los Angeles and this was a hard jail and uh, hard criminals and uh, all types of offenses. But I uh, became a uh, booking officer and I fingerprinted them and uh, also uh, took their uh, uh, possessions and put them in a bag and uh, put them in storage for them to get when they get out. Anyway, ended up, uh, sometimes I'd go up with a lady on the elevator to the top floor where the lady prisoners were and I'd book ladies uh, or fingerprint them. And uh, that was quite an experience. One lady, uh, believe it or not, urinated on my feet, if you can believe that. She was so drunk. But she, <laughs> and then uh, some of the ladies were in real nice clothes. It was like two in the morning. The police car would stop down below and they'd bring them up in the elevator, the lady. But they might have been arrested for drunk and been at a party. And they were well to do, maybe, in very nice clothes. And uh, I would have to fingerprint them and then take them down and put them in a cell with other inmates and the other inmates frequently we were lesbians and riffraff we would say call them and I didn't particularly like putting some of the ladies in there but uh, I did it and it was my job so I did it. Anyway uh, after that I decided I'd take it. Oh and uh, oh I think yes I had another child about this time. I had uh, my little Denise she's my youngest and uh, not number one by any means. Uh, Sharon is supposed to be number one, but uh, they're all number one. But uh, little Denise, uh, I'm quite a bit older now, and uh, I was real thrilled to have her, and Lorraine was too. And uh, uh, so now I have four children's support. So uh, uh, correctional officer didn't pay big money. I think I got four hundred seventy-five dollars a month, as I remember. But there was a job came up that paid 700 and some, 780, I believe, a month as a traffic signal electrician. So I, t oh, I want that. So I took the test while I was working for the police department. Oh, I might mention while I was at the police department, I should go into this a little bit. Uh, they sent me up to uh, the jail, and I was only at the jail for a couple months, booking prisoners and fingerprinting them and locking them in cells. Then they sent me up to the Rehabilitation Center, which was a 40-acre farm the city had up in Saugus, and it was for drunks, strictly drunks. And they had nice new barracks, and it was a minimum security prison. In other words, uh, uh, no, there, there's never any guns in a prison anyway. You never, no one ever carries a gun in a prison. That's uh, not done. But anyway. Uh, these men were just old and uh, drunks and most of them were institutionalized. They'd be up for 90 days, they'd get out, they'd get drunk again and be right back. You'd see the same ones over and over. And they weeded the weeds down in the farm and I'd follow behind them and I'd say, uh, maybe an old man ahead of me, I'd say, Dad, do you know what the carrot looks like? And he'd, he'd say, no. I said, well, this is a carrot here. You don't pull those out. You leave them in the ground. And I, I treat them real nice. I didn't, wasn't mean to anyone. And uh, uh, I made probation. Probation was quite difficult. Uh, in the city, you can be fired any any day for any reason. No, they don't have to give a reason. They can let you go in six months while you're on probation. But I made probation. And uh, that wasn't easy either because up there at the farm when I first went there, the policemen were there and they were, the, the correctional officers, they were doing the job and they loved it because uh, they didn't, there was no hazard to them and it was close to their homes, they lived up there and we were coming to replace them so they wanted to get rid of us and they did, one by one. They got rid of them then. 